Okay, the first talk is by Sagif Shiba, and he will talk about hydrodynamic simulations of, of white dwarf, white dwarf mergers, and the origin of Oka Borstos. Thank you. You can call, um, let me share my screen. You see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Sagiv Shibo. I'm currently a postdoc at Louisiana State University. Uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity uh, to talk here today. Okay. Um, I will present results we obtain from simulating double white wolf systems that end in a merger and discuss how these mergers can be related to a unique class of styles called al corona borogi styles or al styles. Okay, so let's start. Al styles are rare supergiant styles which are deficient in hydrogen, enriched in carbon. Every star in this class has three main characteristics. The first, for which they are the most known for, is large variations in their light curve at irregular intervals. Here I show the light curve of Al Corona Borealis, which is the first member in this class. During a period of 14 years, Al Corona Borealis exhibited several sudden drops in brightness of more than three magnitudes, taking a few days or weeks, and followed by a recovery to maximum light, which is typically slower, taking months and or years. And these declines <clears throat> are caused by the formation of discrete, thick clouds of carbon dust along the line of sight. RCB star often does not show hydrogen lines, as an example, I present the spectrum of S apodis at maximum light. The Balmer hydrogen lines are absent, as well as the molecular carbon hydrogen line. Carbon absorption lines, on the other hand, are clearly seen, specifically carbon 12 lines. Uh, finally, the alcove starts showing infrared excess due to the presence of warm circumstellar material, as can be seen here for our corona bodies. This warm dust may be correlated to the formation of dust grains that causes the variations in the light curve. Moreover, in many alcove stars, a surprisingly low ratio of oxygen 16 to oxygen 18 has been found. This value of an order of unity in the most alcohol stars, much smaller than the oxygen 16 to oxygen 18 ratio in the sun, and the only other stars which have such low ratios are hydrogen deficient carbon stars, the dustless counterpart of alcohol stars, as you can see in this plot. The mass of several alcohol stars has been estimated by their pulsation period and found to be between 0.8 and 0.99 solar mass. The high oxygen-18 abundance in otherwise, otherwise almost hydrogen-free and mainly helium-composed supergiants is difficult to explain by traditional stellar evolution theories. Um, a rejuvenating red AGB star as a result of a final helium flash can explain the hydrogen deficiency but probably not the almost sun-like mass, since the carbon-oxygen white dwarf should not be that massive. So how do alcohol stars form? Currently, the double degenerate scenario is the favorable explanation for the formation of alcohol stars. In this scenario, proposed by Webbing in 1984, a carbon-oxygen white dwarf merges with the helium white dwarf. As in its more massive analog, the, 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 the degenerate for type 1 supernova scenario, the binary begins to coalesce 
because of the laws of angular momentum, the gravitational wave radiation. The lower, lower mass helium white dwarf is then disrupted, and a fraction of the helium is depleted onto the carbon oxygen white dwarf and starts to burn, while the remainder forms an extended envelope around the carbon oxygen white dwarf. This structure of a star with a helium burning shell surrounded by an extended hydrogen deficient envelope closely resembles an alcohol star. Thermodynamic conditions in the helium accreted shell are such that oxygen 18 can be produced by partial helium burning via nitrogen alpha capture and without being destroyed by further alpha capture to neon. To understand better the origin of alcohol stars as, w, as double white dwarf merger, we simulated white dwarf white dwarf system with the hydronomic code Octo Tiger. Octo Tiger has been developed at Louisiana State University in a collaboration between the Department of Physics and Astronomy and the Stellar Group at the Center for Computation and Technology. It is an open source grid based hydrodynamic code that uses adapted mesh refinement techniques. The grid is divided into many subgrids, where each refined grid consists of eight subgrids. One of its unique features is its parallelism algorithm, which uses the parallel X platform instead of the standard MPI or OpenMP. You're welcome to enter our GitHub page for more details about the code. Recently, we have done a thorough set of benchmark tests showing its ability to conserve mass, energy, and angular momentum to a very high procedure. In addition, we carried out some scaling tests, showing almost ideal scaling for large problems, here of a single, of a single cell, up to tens of thousands of cells. These are the equations that Autotiger solves. The important things to, to note here is that we solve the initial physical quantities but in a rotating frame for reference. The grid continuously rotates at constant angular velocity, which equals to the initial binary frequency. The benefits of doing so is to diminish numerical viscosity effect and thus to better conserve angular momentum. Before going into the details of our results, I will describe some similar previous simulations. Motored et al. 2017 studied the mass transfer of binary system, exploring different mass ratios and comparing different numerical techniques, that is, smoothed particle hydrodynamic code against grid based code. They found very similar evolution regardless of the different numerical factor. For mass ratios higher than 0.5, the system is unstable and merged, specifically for Q for mass ratio of 0.7, the less massive white wolf is disrupted onto the accretion, the more massive white wolf, as you can see in the plot. For mass ratio 0.5 and 0.4, the system merges in some cases, and in some cases it doesn't. Staff et al. in 2012 examined the thermal condition in different parts of the merger and confirmed the existence of a shell of higher temperature, which we call the shell of fire or the SOF, for mass ratios less than 0.7. Assuming a fixed total mass for point and solar mass, for lower mass ratio, the accretor is more massive, and the gravitational acceleration of the accreted matter is greater. This results in an auto shell of fire for level skews. Higher temperature in the shell of fire leads to a more rapid burning and quicker production of oxygen 18, as you can see in the plot. You can get to low ratio wells of oxygen 18 to oxygen 16, but in a different uh, period, depending on the uh, mass ratio. The amount of oxygen 16 is not changed by much. However, Higher temperature also leads to a quicker destruction of oxygen 18 to neon, and the ratio starts increasing. A 
However, observers measure the surface abundance and thus the element abundance at the shallow fire does not necessarily represent the surface abundance. In 2018, Staff et al. investigated how much oxygen 16 diffuses out from the carbon oxygen accretor to the shell of fire and outgrowth. Any pre existing oxygen 16 outside the shell of fire will decrease the surface ratio. They found significantly larger amount of oxygen 16 wedged up in the AMR and non AMR grid codes compared to the SPH code. This is possibly due to resolution differences, as the SPS simulation consisted of 20 million particles and better resolved their critter. To reconcile this difference, we performed three dimensional agrodynamic simulation of mass ratio 0.7 of double wide wolf merger at higher resolution with our benchmark version of Octo Tiger. Our highest resolution resolves four times more cells across the critter compared to the AMR simulation of Staff et al. 2018. The initial state of the system is obtained by a self consistent field technique and a treating method to establish a binary which each, where each component is a polytropic structure in an hydrostatic equilibrium. A system of hybrid accretor of 0.53 solar mass wide wall and a 0.37 solar mass annual wide wall was initialized with initial frequency of about two minutes. We use the same equation of state as was used in staff 2018. This equation of state takes into account two pressure components, one from the generator electrons at zero temperature, which depends on density only. The second is thermal pressure of an ideal gas. Initially, the binary is cold with zero temperature, but then heated up by shocks as mass transfer begins. This movie shows the density slice at the equatorial plane. The arrows show projected velocity vector in the rotating frame of reference. Shortly after the simulation begins, a stream of gas from the door, the less massive and larger star, flows through the first Lagrangian point and flows around the crater, mainly along the equator. The simulation presented in this movie has 12 levels of refinement one level less than our highest resolution one. The time in initial orbital period is shown on the lower left corner, and the system will merge at about 14 orbits. As the simulation progresses, mass starts flowing through the two outer Lagrangian points, the L2 and L3, and instability is happening on the surface of the system. Eventually, the donor is tidally stretched and wrapped onto the accretor. The cold donor material is heated by shocks when it impacts the accretor surface. The temperature reaches early burning temperature in a shell around the accretor. The merger is quick, um, and we simulated five additional orbits past merger to let the merger enough time to relax and become more symmetric in the azimuthal direction. Here I present the mass transfer rate onto the accretor as a function of time of simulation L12. Mass transfer begins at some initial value and then slowly increases. At some point close to the merger time, the mass transfer rate steeply increases as the donor is disrupted. This behavior is, is expected and similar to what Motel et al. found. We find that for lower resolution, the initial mass transfer rate is higher and the duration to a merger is shorter. The mass that leads to L2 and L3 is mostly bound and falls back to the central object after the merger. The merged object structure comprises of a compact spheroid with an approximate radius of 10 to the 9 centimeter, and a flattened disk with an approximate radius of three times 10 to the 9 centimeter. The compact spheroid is supported by pressure, while the disk is nearly Keplerian rotating 
and they are for mostly support, supported by rotation. The disk is expected to fall back and be accreted by the central object, but on time scale which are longer than what we are able to simulate. The shell of fire is not entirely spherical and is outer on the, on the poles. We found that the shell of fire penetrates deeper into the core for rounds of lower resolution. Here I showed the average density profile and the total mass enclosed as a function of radius from the accretor center, five orbits past merger. The inner regions roughly up to the radius of the carbon oxygen core have nearly constant density. The outer disk density falls like R to the minus three. And this structure is very similar for all simulations. Based on the density, the temperature and composition, we can calculate the potential helium burning in the shell of fire. As a first step, we consider the triple alpha reaction based on this general approximate equation that I show you. I present equatorial and meridional maps of the energy density that is liberated per second as a result of the triple alpha reaction, five orbits post merger. The shape of the shell of fire is clearly seen with considerable burning around the pole. The total nuclear energy is calculated is negligible at the time scale simulated compared to the binding energy of the merged object. However, it is possible that in some regions, the released nuclear energy is comparable to the local thermal energy. By designating the core of the accretor as a different species, we can follow the diffusion of the core material outward as the simulation evolves. We assume that the core is an even mixture of carbon and oxygen and measure how much, how much oxygen 16 resides in density smaller than 10 to the 5 gram per centimeter cube as a function of time. The value of 10 to the 5 gram per centimeter cube represented density at the shell of fire. We see a trend of less diffusion for higher resolution. However, the value is still considerably high and comparable to what has been previously found. More analysis on this method needs to be done. Lastly, I briefly present performance measurements of Auto Tiger. Uh, recently, we added GPU support for Auto Tiger's idle model, uh, and we ran scanning tests of, a, of the wide world wide world simulation on the new Nest machine thermometer, both on CPUs only and on CPUs plus GPUs, and compare the performance. I must mention here that thermometer is currently in its testing phase. So please don't take these measurements as any indication to parameter general performance. By utilizing the four GPUs per node that, that each node of parameter has, we get a significant speed up for all our resolutions. This is a promising result that will not only allow us to run similar problems faster, but also to simulate bigger problems with additional physics in a reasonable amount of time. Here is my summary. Uh, we have carried out wide world wide world major simulation of mass ratio of 0.7 for a range of resolution. In all of our simulation, we find a hot shell of fire with temperature between one to two uh, times 10 to the eight Kelvin. Around the crater, uh, the cold crater, we have a thick disk. The amount of oxygen 16 that diffuses from the crater to the shell of fire and farther outside still considerable. Um, by scanning our thermometer, we find that uh, when using GPUs, there is a speed of performance of more than four. Thank you for listening. Yeah, uh, thank you for your talk. Um, are there any questions? You can raise your hand or uh, type it in the chat. No questions?
Uh, Tomasz is asking, uh, can you say whether you match uh, Oka Borsta? Sorry? Uh, oh, Tom Marsh is asking, can you say whether you match uh, Oka Borsta O ratio wise? Um, so we are simulating the uh, endodynamic simulations. So we only simulate the merger phase. Uh, if you really want to compare with uh, ARCOP stuff, uh, you need to, to evolve it uh, in a stellar evolution code to see how it evolves and extends. Uh, but we uh, can estimate the, the ratio of the oxygen 16 to oxygen 18 uh, by the presence of oxygen 16 out, outward of the shell of fire. Um, so we, we only uh, simulate the dynamical merger. Um, there is some study that takes this uh, product of this three-dimensional um, dynamical merger and evolve it in MESA. Uh, and then you can see uh, the abundance uh, of each element uh, at the phase of the ARCOP style. And you compare uh, to, uh, to the observation. But uh, so our work, we only focused on the dynamical, dynamical manager and on the first attempt to estimate what the ratio will be. Okay, um, there's an, another question. Um, um, first, it's nice work. Um, do you perform radiative transfer, including irradiation between the two mergers? Um, yeah, no. So as as I as I said, we we neglect the um, radiate, radiative uh, uh, processes. Um, actually, we are currently uh, developing radiation module for Oku Tiger. So in the future, we will try to add some radiation uh, and see how it will affect the the, the simulation. Um, but uh, for this study, the more important things was to understand the merger product, uh, its structure, and uh, the comp different compositions, and mainly to to understand how we can um, decrease the diffusion of the carbon oxygen to the shell of fire. Okay, and uh, we have a hand raised by uh, Rob Isard. Um, can you please speak up? Yeah, no problem. Thank you. It's, it's a really nice talk. Thank you. And uh, I, ju I just wanted to eat, how much material is lost out of L2 and L3 and what is in that material? Uh, I appreciate in your, in your situation that material falls back, but I was thinking if this happened, for example, in a common envelope or something like that, then it might well be swept away rather than fall back. So I wondered how much and, and what's, it, what's it made of? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Um, so how much material uh, is being lost? Uh, I have this number is, um, so the total mass is 0 0.94 mass uh, and, the, and about 7% of that lost from L2 and L3. And we calculated how much of this material is bound, wound bound, and we find only a small percentage of the mass loss to L2 and 3 is, unbound, is unbound. So about 10 to the minus four solar mass is bound. Um, and then uh, you have another question? Yeah, so the composition. Uh, so yeah, if it goes, it's basically helium if it goes from the the side of the door, but it can be also some carbon oxygen. Yeah, we, we, we haven't checked that. That's a good point. No. Okay, so, so we, the, there are types of stars which are similar. They have a, a C13 to C12 ratio, which is very strange. And they probably happen in a common envelope rather than this, but it's, it's the same kind of merger. So it's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let me thank you also again for your talk. And then we move on to the next speaker and hopefully she has arrived.